All right, so and, um, so what I'm going to do today is just share some of the thoughts that we have, or, uh, I've been having working with Amin and Timothy around how we can use um, DVR to basically be a little bit more optimised in how we do our measurement uh, here at PP. Um, before I get into this slide, which is on the screen, um, just a, a description about you know my job, the measurement engineer's job in any company. Is, you know, it encompasses a lot of things, but fundamentally what we are there to do is make sure that we comply with regulatory regulations from a measurement perspective, make sure we comply with commercial agreements that we have with our commercial partners, and ultimately make sure we've got technically defensible data, right? Because as we do these flow measurements, that's ultimately how, that's a starting point for how we monetize our business, right? So we want to have technically defensible results that make all of our regulatory partners and commercial partners feel comfortable. Um, but in this day and age, you know, that sounds like quite a sort, of, a sort of negative starting point. You know, we have to be technically defensible. You know, we have to make sure we comply. It's a little bit negative, you know. What we want to start thinking about now is, is how can we be more um, optimistic? You know, how can we be optimizing um, our, our system design so that we extract maximum value for our investments, right? So we thought that we were really clever with that idea until I remembered this paper that was presented at the North Sea Workshop many, many years ago, 20 years ago, almost now by Lex Shears and Chris Wolf, one of the first workshops I went to when I was starting my career. They showed this great, just fantastic paper. You know, if anybody wants a copy, I'll give it to you. But um, basically what they're trying to show is the value of, what they're trying to, point they're making in this paper is that not all applications are the same, right? One size does not fit all for every metering solution. And, and, the, the, and then they go on to talk about how, you know, if you've got good data and good modeling, then you can make, um, good decisions about how you operate your asset and basically extract more value or get more recovery. So the chart on the left here and the on the blue line, what they're basically showing here is that if you've got a very, very low uncertainty or highly accurate meter, then the cost for that, so we've got uncertainty on the x-axis, cost on the y-axis, the cost for a really certain meter, a very accurate meter, is going to be high. And the cost for a kind of poor quality meter is going to be low, right? And that's that exponential decay you see there. That's the blue line. That's think of that as like your capex, okay? And then the green line is kind of like your associated opex. So if you've got like this perfect measurement system, then you're going to have like really low risk or low losses or low opex. And then as the quality of your meter decays over time, then you're going to carry higher costs or higher opex costs. And the red line is basically just the blue line and the green line added together. And on that red line. There's a, there's a minimum point, right? That's like an optimum point. And so what we would like to do is think about how do we find that spot for all these different types of applications because no application is the same. They're all slightly different. Now we can, we can how, so how do we go about doing that? You know, um, Well, one of the things that we can do is we can use some modeling techniques uh, to do it. Um, and when conventionally we've used, um, you know, traditional forward, you know, uh, process simulators, HISIS and the like. But when we saw DVR, we thought maybe there's an opportunity to do something, you know, a little bit more advanced here, a little bit more helpful in terms of the CAPEX decision. Yeah, next slide, please, I mean. So, um, so, we, so I mean, and I have prepared a paper where, you know, for the OTC in 2021, and it's basically, the purpose of the paper is to examine the interface between these sort of conventional forward simulators like HISIS and a DVR, you know, so basically the forward simulator is doing a process uh, modeling exercise for us, fairly deterministic type of thing. You know, you've got some inputs, you've got some function blocks or calculations, and you get an answer. That's kind of it. But the DVR gives us this extra topology of the uncertainty uh, and the redundancy of other, uh, other field instruments that we have or calculated outputs that we have in the system. That gives us a deeper insight into what's actually going on. So while Forward simulators are established in powerful tools. The DDR is adding this extra statistical layer um, that incorporates the measurement uncertainty, and we can use that when we close the mass and energy balance. And this gives us like a, a, a statistically more relevant picture of what's actually going on in the system. And that's what we wanted to try and explore and see if it gives us some deeper insights into our CAPEX decisions, and also if it can help us optimize some of our operational type uh, behaviors. Yeah, next slide, please. Amy. Okay, so how do we um, 
you know, in the industry as a whole, how do we generally design and operate our measurement systems? Well, it's usually quite prescriptively driven, right? You know, so we've got regulations that we have to comply with. You know, you know regulatory bodies will tell us they want us to meet certain objectives, uncertainty budgets, for example. Commercial obligations will tell us how we want to do, um, you know, production allocation, for example, where we share, allocate cost and revenue based on certain type of measurement inputs. So we've got these kind of rules that will tell us how we design and maybe even mandate how we operate systems. So we've got that driver that drives our, um, our design. Then we've got standards, and those standards tell us how to do it. You know, we've got API, ISO, and these things that tell us how to construct and design our equipment. Then we've got our own internal company practices. You know, this is how we do things around here, Sunny. You know, we just this is our kind of way of doing it, and those can be internal design specs, maybe some kind of maintenance strategies that we follow. Maybe if we're getting a little bit sophisticated, we might do some condition-based monitoring type approaches that might be a little bit bespoke to your own company. Um, spent a lot of my career looking at ultrasonic flow meters and that kind of um, that kind of idea of CBM in that space. So we follow regulation standards, we've got our own practices, and then there's always this idea of stay in your lane, you know. Um, so if you're a measurement person, you generally are sticking to the production export meters or the allocation metering points. You're not really thinking too much about all the adjacent information that's available to you. Someone mentioned virtual metering in the earlier talk, and um, you know we don't we don't often take advantage of all of these extra pieces of information that actually do figure into the mass balance across a system and can be utilized to give us extra utility. So these kind of four pillars, are like, if you like, of how we do things kind of represent the lowest common denominator, right? That's like, if you follow these things, then you will get a solution that kind of fits everything. But as we think back to that initial slide, that initial slide was basically saying that you know, one size doesn't fit all and there's an optimal point for each different application. So when we think about this conventional way of doing it, 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 it gives us, the, and then we think about modeling and how we can use modeling to help us maybe think a little bit differently, we realize that maybe we've got other options here. So next slide, please. Amy. So from a, from a design perspective, you know, we can take advantage of the reconciled measurement data. So this is when we get this more statistically representative um, view of what our process looks like. We can use that to optimize our CAPEX decisions. So in the paper, what we explain is how we can use DVR and we can have a, you know, we can use that simulation with the propagated uncertainties to try and find the optimal number of measurement points and to try and find the appropriate uncertainty for each of those measurement devices that we use at those measurement points. So from a conventional point of view, we would say, okay, it's a lack unit at the end of a, a production facility. That The standards tell us that must be a turbine meter. And then as we move back to a separator, we might say, okay, the standards tell us this must be a you know, V-cone meter if it's a gas leg or something like that. And then we move up further upstream and this, again, the standard conventional wisdom tells us it should be you know, a certain type of multi-phase flow meter or something. But maybe there's a whole bunch of other information, adjacent information that we can take advantage of that might allow us to not necessarily have such an expensive flow meter, say, on the separator outlet. Or maybe we don't need to buy that multi-phase flow meter for the, the wellhead. Maybe there's other things. If we look at the totality of the system and the mass balance across the system, maybe there's an opportunity for us to leverage that extra information we get from the mass balance and the conservation equations that we use there together with the DVR methodology of balancing out all of the tolerances to have a lower cost solution, that optimized point on the next year graph that I showed you at the start. So we investigated that, you know, and, and the whole idea is that if we can start to use modeling tools like this, we can start to generate measurement and allocation philosophy documents that form the starting point for our system designs that are more rooted in the specific application, more rooted in, in and the problem that we're trying to solve for that particular application, as opposed to using something that we've always done before. In a similar way, we can use a DVR for our operations. Um, so when, when we do the mass balance across the system or the energy balance across the system, DVR is basically having to nudge, as Amin was alluding to in his talk, every measurement point has got an uncertainty, right? It's got like a range in which it can fall. And what DVR is doing is it's giving each of those devices a little nudge left and right inside its uncertainty tolerances until it squeezes the whole system to have the right balance, okay? 
And if something has to be squeezed a little bit too much, then it's going to carry with it a statistical penalty, some kind of like um, some kind of indication that it's maybe not performing in the way it should. Think of it like a really big linear regression, right? Then if you've got like an R squared number and a linear regression of one, life is good. But if, as that number gets less further away from one, then life is starting to be bad. So we can take advantage of that statistical penalty to shine a light on some bad actors in our system. And that helps drive our maintenance intervals. Okay, so what that does is instead of us using the conventional approach to doing maintenance of um, you know, we must calibrate this transmitter every three months or we must do this proof every 30 days. We can actually start to use a condition-based monitoring system um, that uses, takes advantage of these statistical penalties that are quantified, rooted in physics, they're not subjective, they're highly objective. We can use them to have a much more cost-effective way of operating our assets. So now we can start to get our OPEX to, move, to be more reflective of reality as opposed to have our OPEX just reflecting something that we used to do in a, in a prior situation. So there's another opportunity for us there in, in the OPEX space. So uh, next slide, please, I mean. So, so this is my last slide here. And I, you know, the whole the whole idea was just to give you some insight into how we're um, you know, we're starting to think about how we can use DVR in the upstream. Um on on these ideas that I'm just sharing with you here in this, you know, seven, eight minute uh, chat are further explored in more detail in the paper for OTC. So of course, you know, please go and have a look at that. Um, but the, my sort of final thought here is um, when I was writing this slide, I was saying new ways of thinking, you know, new ways of thinking can help us and all of that. And then I realized that it's not new. Um, you know, Lex and Chris were talking about this in 2002. So it's not necessarily a new way of thinking. Maybe it's just a new way of doing, you know. And I think if, if we start taking advantage of these tools, then, you know, we've got a great opportunity for us to, uh, as I say, optimize as opposed to just sort of business as usual. I work for Dana Petroleum in the Netherlands. Uh, we are part of the, the larger Dana Petroleum uh, with headquarters in Aberdeen and an office in Egypt. And I work as a production engineer. <clears throat> I joined the, the company in 2011, uh, which is also when we were in the process of implementing our first uh, Valley experience, so the Valley 4 at the time. Uh, we, we modeled our process and I would like to take you through um, what, how we put uh, the Valley model to use. Uh, what benefits are for us. So uh, the, the Ruiter field <coughs> is a field that is uh, located uh, to the west of The Hague <coughs> in the North Sea. It's a platform, the P11B, the Ruiter, uh, including the Medway project. Uh, on the right, you can see our office in the Netherlands, in The Hague. And at the top, we have uh, another offshore platform, uh, the Hansa platform. Um, we implemented the Valley uh, software the Valley model on our the router platform because we have various partners in this project and we needed to have a sure and robust reliable way of allocating production from different fields uh, to the to the platform and the platform uh, currently has two subsea wells and uh, several um, oil wells producing to the platform uh, and gas is being exported through pipelines and oil is offloaded uh, through tankers back to shore. Um, the initial uh, project design was including multi-phase flow meters for the different wells, but quite soon after uh, <clears throat> we brought these on and water cuts increased from, from production of the field, uh, we saw that these meters were losing their reliability, uh, which made it very difficult to allocate the different production streams back to the different fields that we were producing for the platform. Uh, we decided to go with a virtual meter a solution from Belsen, and the rest of this presentation will explain um, the benefits of it. <clears throat> so, uh, setting the scene a little bit, uh, our director platform is shown here in the picture. Uh, it's on the North Sea. First oil was in uh, September 2006. It's oil and gas production, and it has a gravity based structure where the oil is stored three oil wells, three gas wells. Uh, and this is the, the setting that I would like to discuss today. Uh, a simplified process schematic. We can see from the left the different wells coming in. So we have uh, A1, A2, A3, uh, oil production wells, 
there was a later addition to the platform uh, to, to, to the product uh, to the project which was the western extension uh, well and there are two subsea wells for hand and for nets producing uh, into the into the process uh, when the gas wells are at high pressure they they flow through a slug catcher the gas is uh, uh, then processed uh, not processed but going straightly uh, straight to the export gas flow line uh, the oil streams and the liquid streams are all processed through the uh, separation train, so HP separator, MP separator, LP separator. There's a desolder device, uh, and then we have hydrocyclones to uh, separate the last bit of the oil from the water. And the water itself uh, goes through an induced gas flotation uh, vessel, <coughs> where the last bits of uh, gas and water are, uh, are separated. Um, and this entire process, obviously, at all these different points, separators, cyclones, flash gas compressors, it has metering, uh, flow meters, pressure, temperature, um, and all these meters have a certain reliability, <clears throat> a certain accuracy, uh, and this uh, this needs to be reliable because we need to do accounting on our export and also distribution or allocation uh, of our production streams to the different wells. The DVR application, it's a very busy slide, but what we are showing here is the new Valley Studio, <coughs> where uh, this is the model for one of our wells. We have a reservoir that we simulate at the bottom, and it produces oil and gas and water streams uh, into the tubing of the, of, the, uh, of the particular well, in this case the A2 well. And the well itself is modeled uh, using uh, software for uh, tubing performance curves, etc. These VLPs, vertical lift performance curves, are implemented, implemented in the model uh, as data. So the data that, uh, that we use is the real-time measurements from downhole pressure, temperature, uh, but also the calculations that we, um, that we feed into the model. Um, and the production from this well then goes up through, uh, through the pipeline to the platform where it goes through the manifold and the different wells then commingle into the first stage separator. Uh, what we see here is the, the process schematic with the, you can recognize the, the separators, the HP and the LP separators. And on the left, we have the wells entering the process system. So the different wells that enter the process <coughs> here too. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the wells. The, the production from these wells, oil, gas, and water, flows into the first stage separator or the, the HP separator. Gas is separated and processed. Water feeds down to um, to the lower to the uh, IGF, and the oil is passed on to the next separation stage. Um, and eventually, the oil is then stored in the, the GBS, where it can be offloaded uh, to tankers. We need to have accurate idea of the oil, and the water, and the individual gas uh, production. One, because we need to, uh, when we sell, we need to back allocate where this came from, so which uh, partners are entitled to uh, to the sales. Uh, but also for reservoir management purposes, we need to know exactly which field has produced uh, which volumes, uh, so that our uh, our recovery from these fields can be optimized. And that is uh, what our previous speaker, our keynote speaker, highlighted. The data accuracy is so vital because if we have an accurate idea of what our reservoirs are, how our reservoirs are performing, we can also do better predictions on uh, when the final drop of oil or gas uh, can be produced. Uh, each of the streams that are modeled in, our, in the Valley model um, has, has various um, uh, properties. And the properties are accurately um, uh, calculated, and uh, the balance for heat uh, and uh, and flow across the system from from start to finish is maintained. And each of these um, uh, properties, obviously, a result of a, a balance uh, of the enthalpies and the, the mass uh, that that is produced and uh, Passed through the system, uh, but based on data, based on flow meters, pressures, temperatures, with with their own um, reliabilities and accuracies. So every hour, <coughs> the Valley model 
collects all the, the, the individual data sets. So the, the temperatures, pressures, uh, volumetric uh, flow rates, uh, mass flow rates, etc. It reconciles this data. So it, uh, uh, and then it, uh, it's fed to the, to the storage system where we can find the results of the data. Uh, and, um, uh, and we can analyze whether or not these results are in line with our expectations. Um, and then the, the results are QC'd and finally stored. So not only do we have the virtual, uh, sorry, do, do we have the multi-phase flow meters that are um, that are calculating or that are measuring flow rates in terms of oil, gas, and water from the individual wells? We now have virtual flow metering that gives uh, that gives oil, gas, and water rates, and corrects is able to correct actually the errors that we find in the multi-phase flow meters. Uh, and my next slide will show you the results. Uh, if we look from left to right, we see the A1, the A2, and the A3 wells with the flow meters that are showing uh, in black the measured uh, on the first slide uh, the oil production and in the green we see the reconciled values so what the value model was able to actually correct these measurements to so we see clearly some kind of a bias in the A1 oil production in the A2 oil production we see a total mess basically this meter is uh, now poorly maintained and it's very erratic, the results that we get from this meter. But uh, because of the balance, the mass balance and the, the thermodynamics um, uh, and flow meter balance, uh, Valley is still able to get quite an accurate, uh, uh, stable and usable data set uh, in terms of uh, flow meters, uh, flow, uh, flow rates from this well. Um, and our A3 well, likewise, also we clearly see some kind of a bias on the MPFM. So for us, uh, the, the, the DVR uh, system uh, has turned actually a, a system that was, that was not very reliable. Uh, it was early time, but later when water production started uh, and gas rates increased um, to, through gas coning, uh, it's turned into an unreliable system. Uh, the DVR system was able to give us still uh, data that we can work with. Uh, and uh, data that can be audited, QC, and when we run into trouble, uh, usually it is because of uh, faulty data input. For example, uh, we take spot measurements of our um, uh, of our BS and Ws, so the water cut measurements from our individual uh, wells, and when these are entered incorrectly, the valley uh, system uh, obviously has difficulty. Um, finding a, a, a proper solution, so it will increase uh, the penalty of this particular measurement, um, and we can get a report of all the penalties that have been identified. Um, so each of the individual meters that may be off a little bit uh, will get will get a, a flag in terms of higher penalty, uh, and this uh, then allows us to inspect more closely uh, where this error came from or this penalty. And on multiple occasions, it has resulted in uh, a closer study of these meters, uh, of, of the sample measurements, and correction of these, these data sets, uh, allowing a, a, a better solution to the, to the global um, uh, data set. Yeah, so what I'm going to share to you uh, today is that um, how we are using DVR within DNV. Um, and as the title already explains a bit, uh, we use it to allocate uh, for allocation systems, especially upstream. Um, and I have one case study that I would like to share with you, uh, which we did for uh, Charlie Gali Hess. There we go. Um, so how we use DVR uh, within our company is that we use it as a verification method for uh, for assessment of uh, existing allocation systems. Um, basically, I'm often looking at allocation systems which use by difference or parata or uncertainty based allocation uh, methods. And it's often in, in upstream, so it's often wet gas situations or, or multi-phase. Um, we have designed the method in such a way that is quite generic, so we can use it also for more the downstream um, type of structures, so gas transmission lines or oil uh, oil uh, um, refineries. Um, and, and already what it says, and I mean, we, we use it as a verification method, and that's based on the assumption uh, that we think that DVR is superior above all other, um, other uh, allocation methods, and I 
hopefully try to prove that today. Um, so first of all, just want to mention several key advantages of, of, of using DVR for allocation. And I think uh, Amin, you already, uh, already shared a few. Um, what we typically do is, so just give you an uh, example, is this is uh, this kind of a nice um, uh, autistic uh, expression of an, uh, of an allocation system where you have a kind of a subsea manifold where multiple wells are connected towards. And maybe you have measurements here. You can also do virtual measurements uh, here. And you combine these streams to a second manifold, which also se separate fields are, uh, are feeding in and then eventually to a production platform. And often this type of uh, like complex system, we try to, to basically write it in, in a standard way of, of just the several measurements that feed into at some point. And then you have a third measurement, which actually is, is, is should be equal to the sum of this. So that's the, the mass balance equations that, um, that uh, Amin talked about. And we have these balance equations on, on multiple locations. So for instance, on the mid scale, so we have the, the lower scale. So the, the, the first stage, second stage, third stage. And each time we switch between two stages, you have some some uh, some conversion law, uh, conservation laws that you should uh, should obey. And what we see that DVR can basically handle that quite easily. So the, the the structure of DVR is that you can basically add additional layers. You can you can add some tie-ins here as well, and and automatically DVR takes it into account as long as you make these balances uh, correctly. Um, what we also see is that DVR can take into account multiple different measurements. So you can imagine that well measurements have a higher uncertainty than somewhere at the well platform where we can do better with measurements and at the custody transfer we have the top notch measurements. So like maybe 1% and here we have something like 10% or 20%. And even between wells, the, the uncertainty can differ because of different conditions. So all these type of different uncertainties, the, um, the DVR method can take into account. And basically that leads to the imbalance that you have in the system. You can basically push that, that imbalance towards well, the, 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 the measurements that have the, the highest likelihood of being wrong. So the ones with the highest uncertainty. So DVR automatically builds this statistical, uh, the nudging that Tom was also talking about. It's, it pushes the imbalance towards the sources that we think are, are suspect to, to, to mismeasurement. And that, in the end, would lead to more like a fair, uh, more fair uh, uh, way of, uh, of of reallocating your uh, your imbalance. And of course, for stakeholders, that's very important. Uh, it's not not that important to always uh, minimize the imbalance, but it's more important if we have an imbalance to to push it back to the stakeholder that's responsible for this uh, this imbalance. Well, one of the other things is that we often look here at flow rates. So we always talk about gas and oil and um, water flow rates. But also DVR is quite flexible to include secondary measurements. Um, so I think also within Belsum, you, you look at like pump characteristics, you look at uh, DPs. Uh, for instance, in, in allocation, you could look at, uh, at composition measurements. So uh, you could overlay a composition measurement uh, as long as it, it, it satisfies the same, uh, same mass balance equations. And you can follow that, that parameter. So for instance, a composition of, of CO2 concentration, you can follow that through your, uh, through your allocation system and make uh, choices on, on where to put your imbalance. Um, and the fifth one, which is very important and also mentioned by, uh, by Amin before, is that DVR has the ability to, to, to identify systematic errors in your, uh, in, your, um, in your allocation system. And especially in a kind of a, 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 the stage which is in between two uh, measurement. So in this case, the, this uh, this level here. Um, all these these advantages and also why and what type of um, uh, limitations you have in terms of detectability of these uh, these systematic errors. I refer back to a paper that was written by me and uh, Tom uh, Tom Barings, um, which was published in the Journal of Petroleum uh, Science and Engineering on like the really fundamentals of uh, of, of DVR. Well, for us, um, DVR is not sufficient only. Uh, and again, also mentioned by, uh, by, um, by Tom, is that we use DVR, so the algorithm, uh, with all the advantages that I just mentioned. Uh, but we combine it with process simulation tools. So we use HISIS or Unison. We can use both. Uh, and we connect our DVR uh, algorithm together with these uh, process simulations. And that gives us the advantage to, uh, that we can take into account all these uh, potential interface mass transfer that can occur between for instance, well measurement, which is, now let's say it's a high pressure measurement. And if you do reduce pressure here, you can have degassing of your oil and the PFT simulation. So the, the, the process simulations take that into account. So we can also account for phase exchange. Uh, next to that, we can also look at density changes or shrinkage factors. We can, uh, you can basically uh, calculate everything you want. So that total package, so the DVR algorithm with these advantages and um, uh, the combination with the process uh, simulation tool that, that can really mimic as a digital twin 
the the real uh, allocation system. That's that's the the method that we use uh, within the UV to uh, to assess these uh, these allocation systems. So that is a short introduction on the method, and I'm going to dive directly into the uh, the case study of uh, Charlie Gali Hess. Uh, we were asked to assess their uh, their allocation system, uh, and they have a very large allocation system, a white gas allocation system, uh, just offshore here between Thailand and Malaysia. Uh, it's this area where there are multiple fields, I think about eight, uh, where they have 120 wells uh, connected to six wallet platforms, which are connected to two custody transfer export stations. So it's kind of a big system with a lot of a lot of nodes. Um, all these fields, or most of the fields, are running in very high gas fractions, so GVFs uh, more than 99%, so just a bit of liquid. And basically two questions they asked us. Um, they had a existing allocation method in place, which is a combination of uh, by difference and pro rata, uh, based on standard volume. And they asked us to assess the current allocation method with DVRs, to see what the differences are and uh, if, if that method is, uh, is close. And, and second is, um, um, if you do this this by means of DVR, can you also pinpoint potential sources of uncertainties because that's uh, one of the powers of DVR. Um, so that's the two things that I, uh, that I will focus on in the next two slides. Um, so first, how well is the, the, the allocation system of, uh, or the, the current allocation system? Uh, so as I said, um, they have a by difference uh, method combined with pro rata and, and uh, by means of the following structure. So, you can see here the reconciliation factor on the vertical uh, axis, and these are all the, the wells. So, and these wells are uh, basically numbered, and you can see the well head platform G, H, and J. So they all have the letters, and then the, uh, the, the, the numbers are the, are the wells that are connected to this, uh, this well head platform. And what they decided to do is they decided to do a by difference on the well head platform level. Uh, so allocate all the imbalance to a set of wellhead platforms, so G, H, and J. And then from there, from the wellhead platforms, do a pro rata allocation towards well level. Uh, and that results in these, uh, these red dots. So you can see that the wellhead platforms that are claimed to have good meters, so that's the reason why they made this distinction between a few wellhead platforms. Um, these wellhead platforms had old meters, these ones were newly installed meters, and they claimed that these ones had a higher uncertainty than, than these ones. Uh, and that's the reason why for these wellhead platforms, the reconciliation factor is one, or in other words, nothing has changed. So it's just the same, uh, same value as measured. And for these wellhead platforms, they make a large correction for the total imbalance of the system, uh, which is about 0.92, so it's, it's quite significant. Um, so what DVR does is the, that's the blue dot. So uh, our method uh, produces these results. So it basically assigns the imbalance also partly to the good meters. In the last, I mean, you could see that indeed the meters are doing much, much better. I mean, uh, the, 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 the difference is about two or three percent. And you can see that indeed in the region of the, uh, the malperforming meters or like the, the claimed uh, wrong meters, uh, you can see the DVR um, uh, assigns the, the imbalance in a more, uh, in a more, I would say, a more, uh, uh, a, a more sophisticated way, so to speak. Uh, you see several meters which are on top here. Uh, those uh, wells are producing a very low amount of, 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 of gas and, uh, and also liquid. And basically what DVR tells, well, if, if it's a low amount, it doesn't really matter if I'm going to correct that by a factor of 0.9. It doesn't do anything with the imbalance of the, of that system. Uh, it's better to put that on other wells which are producing a lot uh, because this will not help us. So once in the statistical view, so in the penalty factor, it doesn't help us to change a, a flow rate, then basically, well, DVR will practically ignore this uh, this well. And it will put more focus on the wells that are dominant. And then you see this big difference between the uh, between the, uh, the wells. Um, there's also a different way. So this is more or less uh, uh, what they asked us to do. So they had a kind of an, uh, um, a statement that it should be plus or minus uh, 5%. So yeah, we could, uh, could, uh, could indicate some, uh, some wrong measurements. So also, there's another way of looking at it. Um, so once you've done DVR, you have also a lot of secondary information, which is well, not always used, but it's, it's very useful to look at it. Um, and that's by means of uh, plotting the same reconciliation factor, which is again here on the vertical axis, um, as a function of the relative sensitivity. Well, the relative sensitivity is basically how sensitive the imbalance is to that measurement. Uh, and, and you could read that a bit as the, 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 it's, it's a measure of the total mass flow of one. Uh, one well. And within this diagram, you see a lot of difference. So you see a set of wells which are here on the top. Uh, but we also see a few 
measurements that really stand out. And, and you could see here, this, this, this measurement here is not really doing well compared to its, uh, it's it, the same type of wells with the same type of production. Um, and you see that this is a very malperformed meter, uh, but you can also see that the sensitivity is very low. So improving this meter will not really help us in the total imbalance. So it's a malperformed meter, but with low impact. So basically we don't really, we don't really care about this measurement. Um, but also in the same plot, we can see several measurements uh, which are also malperforming, but also they have a very high impact. So improving this measurement uh, towards like this in this area uh, will really help us to to, to decrease the uh, the imbalance. And basically, this picture will will tell us a bit about well, if we resolve this this one and also the group of um, of measurements here, then in the end we hope when we, we we resolve it that the total imbalance will become smaller and basically the whole shift of these points will go up and we will have a lower reconciliation factor overall over all the, uh, the the wells so this gives us a bit of a like a, a plan of what to tackle and which which ones to do first so it's kind of a prioritization of, of which measurement you should uh, you should um, should look at first um, and this of course is, is looking at what the impact on the on the imbalance is we can also look at that in a different way so in, in terms of the penalty factor i mean shortly mentioned it it's it's basically the amount of adjustments you do towards your measurement. So uh, you, you do, of course, with reconciliation, do an adjustment of your initial measured value uh, divided by the expected range in which the, uh, the, the measured value can change. And that's what we call the penalty factor. Uh, normally, you would hope that that's something within two, so a factor of two. Uh, but you can also see that a few uh, outliers we have here. So these measurements are not necessarily very important. So they, they're not very important for your uh, allocation uh, system so for your total imbalance the only thing it says these are meters that are not performing according to spec so what we expect uh, so hypothetically you could say that this one is very wrong and it's very high impact on the the, the the imbalance in your in your allocation system but if this would be a measurement which had a plus or minus 30 percent uncertainty then basically it's it's using within spec so it, it's according to specification so this picture with a penalty factor gives you the meters that are performing out of specification. And, and so it indicates which one you need to look at at least. Yeah. So if you look at the case study that we did, then uh, most of these measurements, so these measurement errors or these, these like uh, unexpected high uh, adjustments uh, were mainly because of wrong uh, DP range settings. Uh, we saw some effects of interface mass transfer for several wells and also um, uh, that uh, some wet gas meters were not uh, calibrated. So being said that, um, coming to a conclusion, um, we think that DVR is a very elegant and statistically uh, more well, accurate approach for, uh, for allocation. Uh, next to that, it's very easy to, to tackle quite complex allocation system, especially in multi-stage multi, multi and multi-tier uh, allocation systems. Um, something that we didn't show in this presentation because this one is a kind of a very uh, short summary, uh, but you can also prove that DVR is a kind of a hybrid hybrid um, system of all existing allocation methodologies. So it's a kind of a generalization of, of uh, by different sporata and uncertainty based allocation. Um, although we need some more information about uncertainties. And I also saw that Daniel uh, already asked a question about that. So we need some more information about the, 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 the inputs that we have in the, in the field. Um, also, we saw within our study that phase transition can be quite important. So the coupling with a process simulation tool is, is quite important. Um, and what I think is very important, and, and often not that, that, that directed to, but if you use DVR, you also have kind of a tool to, to, to know which kind of improvements you can do along the way. So if you have multiple wells and you want to prioritize uh, where you put your efforts in and, and try to, uh, to resolve this, this allocation imbalance, DVR will give you kind of an overview of where to put your focus first uh, and, and try to solve your, uh, your imbalance. I, I, in fact, I have uh, a question that I would like to uh, go back to Purins about that. Now, Purins, in, in your uh, study, uh, you showed us um, a little bit of a mismatch between, in some cases at least, between your uh, multi-phase flow meter and uh, sometimes it was too noisy or maybe unreadable in a way, and and uh, and, and what you got out of the DDR uh, processing. Is how's that uh, helping you go back uh, to the maybe to the vendor or so to the multi-phase flow meter and try to maybe correct that or or how does the process the operational part of that process goes uh, with with your uh, operations? I mean, yes. So 
Uh, yeah, good question. And uh, indeed, initially, that is what we did. Uh, the multifaceted flow meters, like I said, at the start of production, when there was primarily oil uh, and liberated gas um, produced, they were quite uh, accurate uh, in their uh, in their role. Uh, but as time progressed and uh, <clears throat> more and more water was produced, <clears throat> there was a tipping point where uh, the multiphase flow meters were no longer really uh, accurately able to distinguish between the gas, oil, and water phase. And we got uh, even some uh, reverse effects where oil was being reported as water and, and, uh, uh, and vice versa. Um, how the DVR method uh, or the DVR model was helping us is it was, uh, it, it was maintaining uh, stable results for these particular flow streams. So we could go back to the individual meters that were that were now uh, inducing a lot of penalty on the on the, on the global solution, and uh, inspect them. So we could send a service engineer to to the meter, uh, take it apart, clean it, put it back together, calibrate it, and then it would work for a while. But we noticed as time progressed that more and more uh, we were we were needing to send out service engineers, and this was a costly affair. And because uh, meanwhile the valley uh, model was so reliable. Uh, for these particular wells, bear, bear in mind these are oil wells, they're produced by uh, ESPs, which are quite accurately modeled in other software. Uh, so we, we really were confident that we knew what was going on in the wells, just the multiphase flow meters were not agreeing with the results we were expecting. Uh, so in time we decided we no longer need to service these meters. We can uh, stop spending money on them, we will just let them uh, run in the background because they they do provide us data, even though the data may not be very accurate or reliable, it is still data. And some parts of the data is usable. Uh, so maybe the mass flow meters are, are still usable, maybe the, um, <coughs> the well, different parts, maybe temperature and, uh, and pressure is still usable in a different way. Um, but the, the results that were coming from multiple flow meters, we were no longer using in our uh, allocation. So uh, actually, I believe, that a backup in virtual flow metering is um, uh, is, is a sensible approach, <clears throat> even if you are planning to run multi-phase flow meters on your streams, just to keep a check, keep a close eye, and automate the process uh, on on these flow meters, so you know when they start to drift or develop a bias due to maybe scaling uh, or other issues. Great, thank you for uh, for the explanation. I think. Uh, yeah, if, if I uh, gather uh, from what you said, yeah, basically you, you're actually uh, pretty much also relying on DVR on the collective information that's coming from the well and how you link that information to the information on more reliable metering, maybe at the export meters, and how you kind of combine that uh, set of data together in order to come up with something that is, uh, uh, you know, continuously providing you with the reliable data that you can rely on on a continuous basis. Uh, hopefully that uh, certainly uh, not uh, interfering with your uh, production or your measurement that you continue to do your things uh, until you solve uh, the physical problems that you have with certain meters. Um, that's um, a good thing. Thank you very much. Um, I, I, I do have a uh, also, a question for Dennis myself on, on, on the work that you're doing. And I, I see the paper that you mentioned there, which I think is, is quite an expensive paper on DVR. And the, personally, I uh, uh, invite uh, you know, uh, attendees to kind of have, have a look at that uh, and probably uh, uh, check it out and, 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 and see the detailed work that you've done there. Uh, certainly, on the the example that you showed there, you, you showed a sort of a multi-tier type of uh, uh, allocation system. And can you comment on a little bit on the tiering uh, of that and how DDR can allocate that? I mean, is DDR applicable to the multiple tiers and how it compares to other methods, if any? Uh, allocation methods? Yeah. yeah, I think that that's a very good, that's a very good point. Uh, I mean, uh, we, we see a lot that uh, for instance, if you have a multi-stage or multi-tier allocation system where basically a balance comes from both sides. So, I mean, you could you could say, well, we go bottom up or top down, 
uh, when doing allocation, uh, while DVR does it all at the same time. And that's also the reason why there is uh, this multiple redundancy, which is able to detect these gross errors, which you normally wouldn't, because if you go top down, you say, well, the cost of transfer is true, then you go one step down and then you reconcile it over there. And then you go from that reconciled values down to the next level, the well level, for instance, and you just go from top to bottom. Um, and that, then basically you're missing you're missing information because it, it may be that somewhere in the middle stage you have a wrong measurement. So then you're just doing this allocation based from uh, one the, the, the top level to the middle level, yeah. and you're missing the information from the bottom. And, and, and that's a, a waste, basically, because it, it might produce, even though often the well measurements have a higher uncertainty, uh, it does provide you with valuable information on on how it comes from the bottom up approach, and and that's what I think DVR is 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 kind of um, uh, superior in in that sense is that it doesn't care about that. It just takes all the information from both sides. It does not have a direction in that sense. It just optimizes the whole system at once, and that's something that I I, I like about it. And that's the reason why you can you can spot intermediate uh, errors as long as you uh, that that's also in the paper if you comply with certain statements about uncertainty the amount of flow and then you can really pinpoint errors somewhere in the middle of your allocation system and and, and indeed as you said without any expect inspection it's just based on data only and you just can pinpoint which which one is wrong yeah so pr pretty much uh, that you know when when you're following a system like this one you're actually uh, you know, more confident about being able to pinpoint the problems before you put them into your allocation because yeah. the thing yeah. that happens to an allocation is that you have a bias in your management. Somebody is kind of uh, say that he's producing so much when he's not, and then you rebalance that error. Uh, you distribute that error to everybody else who's yeah. not, really, um, uh, you know, he, he's not. Uh, uh, responsible for that error, and yet he's going to have to yeah. get the consequences. So, and all, 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 yeah, yeah. All, all standards basically say you first need to take care of all the systematic bias before you do allocation. But but how how do you do that if you don't have any information? I mean that that's uh, and that's what I think DVR is doing. So you at least have one step in between to take away the systematic biases, and then you can do the allocation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah because it, um, I mean I come from the US. The traditional way, in fact, in the US to do it. Uh, uh, at least a conventional way is that uh, we we go about uh, go on the platform we send our team every every month or so and they swap the meters and bring them back recalibrate and put them back whether they're working or not working that's kind of mm -hmm. the standard of going about try to alleviate the bias not knowing that it's biased yeah. but in DVR, it's it's as you mentioned in your conclusion it's a very elegant way to go about doing it you don't have to go yeah. swap a meter you don't have to send your men to do that on you realize that there's something wrong with this and yeah. then you, you would intervene so you know it works yeah, so, on the operational side as well yeah it's, i mean also if you look at the, the 120 wells basically you could say well you need to recalibrate all these meters but if you look at the uh, at the results that we gained then basically you would say well maybe 10 or 20 percent of the meters need some recalibration or some tuning and the rest just keep them as is because it doesn't matter i mean it's just okay so good enough yeah so let me take that minute to really uh, thank both uh, our audience uh, attendees and also our panelists here, uh, Uranus and um, and Dennis and Timothy, on, on a very uh, informative talk. And um, thank you again for attending the, the summit. Uh, there's another session going on for the, for the West, uh, which is uh, the US. I mean, if your time uh, is permit, uh, you know, feel free to come again. And these are there's slightly different topics on that session. And thank you again for your attendance today. Uh, the session is over and uh, you can disconnect. Thank you. <laughs>